We are back with uh, exercise five, assignment four. And in this experiment, we are going to see a demonstration of how diffusion across a membrane works. And this is related to how materials can diffuse in and out of a cell membrane, as well as uh, this large scale experiment. Now we're gonna use a modified version of the experiment. It is different from the one that's printed in your book, but it is in your supplement manual. Um, in mine, it is page 88. The top of it says diffusion, molecular size, and membrane permeability. Step one is to fill a beaker two thirds full with water. And it also says in step two that we should be soaking a 15 centimeter length of cellulose tubing. So this is what it looks like dry. It doesn't look like much of anything, it almost looks like a little strip of plastic. But when you soak it, um, it becomes soft and pliable and you can actually um, find an opening in it it, and then it actually becomes tubing that you could like stick your pinky down in. And that's what it looks like. So this is most of this time this has been done for you, just remove the tubing from the beaker. So I'm gonna do this out of order a little bit because I wanted to just use the same water to soak as I was using um, for the experiment. So I'm just kind of feeling around on this tubing to find sort of where the seam is so that it'll be nice and straight and it won't be all twisted up. Um, okay, I'm taking it out. And it says that we are supposed to add four milliliters of iodine solution. So I've got my iodine here. And these pipettes, they hold three milliliters to the mark, but eight or uh, four milliliters would be a bit more than that. So I'm just gonna put a whole pipette full in the water and rinse it out. And then the next step is to place an orange clip on the bottom of the tubing to form a sack. So um, oh, I suppose you can't see what I'm doing. I have these orange clips here and I just feed the tubing in and I clip it shut. And that's all there is to that. Carefully open the other end of the cellulose and fill it half full with starch solution. Okay, so here's my starch solution, 1% starch. As you can see, there's like a little opening here. These are a little tricky to open without ripping, so you just have to be patient and gentle. And you just have to get it open enough that you can fit the nozzle of your bottle in. So I got the corner open. And let me flip it up. As you can see, it's going very slowly because there's a small nozzle on this bottle to avoid my making a huge mess next to the computer with all this liquid as I film. Okay. okay, so 
This tubing is actually a little longer than 15 centimeters and I've filled about six and a half centimeters worth. So I think that's probably half. Um, then it says to add five milliliters of glucose solution. So I'm just gonna kind of pinch that in my fingers and hold it so I don't drop it while I open this bottle of 20% glucose solution. Clean pipette. It's two and there's four milliliters. Oh, it's at five. So we just want a partial pipette full. Okay, now that's five. You know what you are placing into the sack, therefore you do not have to test the solution. Carefully clip the open end of the sack with another orange clip. So I'm going to do that. And you don't have to do it right at the end. You can kind of go down in a bit. That's fine. And then rinse the outside of the sack before placing it into the beaker, the beaker of water. Why? So my thought on why we're going to rinse it is because some of the stuff I put inside might have dripped onto the outside as I was filling it. And we don't want the iodine to react with our starch before things have crossed the membrane. So I will be right back after I rinse this in some clean water. And I've rinsed it off. Now I place it into the beaker and I just let it sit there for 20 minutes and then examine the beaker, record any color change. Remember what, remember you placed iodine into the beaker of water, what color change are you looking for? Then test the solution outside the sack to see if glucose diffused from the sack using the Benedict's test. And you might recall this iodine test for starch and the Benedict's test for glucose from our identification of biological molecules lab that we did a few weeks ago. It has been 20 minutes. And so I'm returning with our beaker with the dialysis tubing and the bag with iodine. And as you can see, this bag that once was clear and held a whitish, clear, cloudy solution now contains a blue-black substance inside the bag. Now, if you recall from our experiment that we did previously in the chemistry unit on identifying biological molecules. Remember what it means that this has turned this blue black color in the presence of iodine. It means that starch is present. And what this also means since the starch was inside this bag and the iodine was outside the bag, and we made sure that there was no meeting of the two chemicals in between, except through the membrane. That means that either the starch came out or the iodine went in to the bag. Now, where we see the reaction happening indicates which one of these two substances was able to cross the membrane. Since this beaker is still the original orangish brown color of the iodine, no reaction occurred, which means starch is too large of a molecule to cross through the diffusion or to diffuse across the dialysis tubing membrane. Iodine is a small enough molecule that it was able to pass through this tubing. Next, we will have to do the Benedict's test to figure out whether the glucose that we know we put inside this bag was able to pass through the bag and come out into this water. So I'm gonna take this water and I'm going to do a Benedict's test on it and I will come back. 
All right, we are continuing with the experiment uh, where we have to do the Benedict's test now on this iodine water to see if glucose came out of the bag. So to do the Benedict's test, we put one milliliter of the substance to be tested in a clean test tube. So I have here a clean test tube and we're gonna pipe that up one milliliter. Into the test tube it goes. And then I'll get a clean pipette. Add three drops of, oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing. Add three drops or 0.15 milliliters Benedict solution to the test tube and mix by shaking. One, two, three. Oops, back in there. It's by shaking. All right, um, color-wise, we're looking at a clear, somewhat blue-green color. I'm trying to turn this so that you can see the color a little bit. All right, and then I have to heat it. So I'll come back in a second after I've heated it. Okay, I have just finished heating the solution up. And as you recall from the Benedict's test, any color change to anything other than blue is a positive. And how uh, yellow or first it turns green, then yellow, then orange, then red. Red is a lot of glucose, green is a little bit of glucose, and yellow and orange are somewhere in between. And as you can see here, this is sort of um, a light orange leaning towards red color. Definitely not blue though. So I'd say that is definitely a positive reaction. Now what this means for us is that since the reaction for the Benedict solution was positive in the water outside the bag, where there was no glucose at the startup of the experiment, that means that glucose is a small enough molecule that it was able to diffuse through the membrane of the bag and into the water. 